Creek Pass, which runs from Camas, Utah, up to Hannah. It is one of my favorite stretches of road in the entire country, and it is an absolutely gorgeous day today. So we are going to work on several things. The number one skill that you need to learn if you truly want to learn how to go fast is to learn to slow down your hand and foot controls and your movements on those controls. The quicker you go, the more important smoothness becomes. So once you get into a corner, you cannot just snap the throttles either open or closed. You really have to be smooth. And to do that, you have to get your entrance speed set and your initial lean angle set. It all kind of plays together, but your smoothness with the controls is absolutely critical. And what I mean by that is I teach what's called the one second rule. And it should take you a minimum of one second to make any change in either the throttle or brakes, except for that split second when you're shifting. But you still want to roll off the throttle before you shift. I'm going to put the suspension into sport mode here. Okay, so a big corner coming up. 1001. And I should not have to change my line until I am out of the corner. And in this case, we're going to keep going to go to the outside so we can turn back into the next corner. I'm also on the racing line, which is outside, inside, outside. But what we're really working on now is smoothness with the throttle in the brakes. And we haven't been going quick enough to need that, but that's, uh, that's coming up here with the fun stuff. And I don't care if you're going wide open throttle to close and open again it should take a minimum of a second so when I roll on the gas 1001 when I go to roll off the gas 1001 turn in 1001 and I'm not going to change my lean angle again until I'm done 1001 And I go the entire corner without having to make a change. That consistency is really important. You cannot suddenly decide to ride properly if a deer jumps out in front of you or a car ends up in your lane. You will do what you have always done. So if you're one of these guys that's always on and off and on and off and red, <laughs> That's the way you're going to ride when the chips are down, when you get spooked, when you get scared. By riding smoothly, it makes you ride smoothly all the time. And when the chips are down, you may, t you may close the throttles in, in, in half a second or three quarters of a second, but you're not going to slam the throttles closed and die on the brakes, because that's not the way you've been riding really makes a difference and those little changes is the difference between having an accident and not having an accident and the closer you get to the limits the more important that smoothness becomes and so I'll go I'll be wide up with throttle here I'll go down a gear this third gear I'm all the way up and I'll still go 1001 1001 1001 right downshifting again is one of those rare cases where you can move quickly I don't use the clutch downshifting but once I'm into this corner my lean angle and my throttle position do not change we roll off just a little bit hold my line hold my throttle and you can hear it in the exhaust note. If I'm doing this, you can tell. So that's the one second rule. 
Gonna go around this truck coming up the hill here. I was out riding the very first week I bought this motorcycle. So went down to Southern Utah towards Moab and got into a freak hailstorm. And it came out of nowhere. We were riding, we were going 70 or so. And before I could get the bike stopped, we were deep into you know, a half an inch of hail on the road. Slippery as snot. And you know, by the grace of God, I did not crash, but I'm sure that one of the reasons that I kept that bike up is I didn't do anything stupid. In the middle of that slippery condition, we rolled off the gas, pulled in the clutch, and kind of coasted to a stop. And uh, we sat there for 45 minutes waiting for the stuff to melt off, but if I had yanked the throttles closed, I am sure I would have crashed. One of the reasons you want to go slowly with the controls is it minimizes weight shift in the motorcycle. Now this bike doesn't have traditional forks. It has what's called a, a variation of the Hotchkiss front end. It's a double A-arm setup like on a race car. And so it really helps separate the braking forces from the cornering forces and the suspension forces. And what that means is this bike doesn't dive under braking like most big heavy motorcycles do um, but if you're on a regular bike with force and you roll off the gas and jump on the front brakes you'll get a significant amount of weight shift forward it loads the front tire up which is nice but it really unloads the back tire and that can get you in trouble the less weight is on a tire the less traction is available and that is when you can have a tire slide and uh, obviously things go downhill from there. Okay, this is one of my favorite sections of road. And now we're gonna work on the proper line. I'm gonna turn here. And it looks like I'm turning early, but watch the angle of the bike. And you can really carry a lot of speed through here. Break a little bit in a straight line get off the brakes and turn in, get back on that throttle just a little bit to hold it steady, come back so I can make the next one. And now when I see that dotted line, I know the road's gonna open up and I can really wail through here. But see, I've gotta know where the bike is going to be based on my lean angle that if I need to make a change, I can make that change early. If I'm going to hit the guardrail, I don't want to go, ah, and then add a bunch of lean angle. I may drag a hard part, and that is uh, never a good thing. So establishing your line early, knowing where the bike is going to be, that is what lets you make those small adjustments that can save your cookies without riding heroics in the process. So 30 mile an hour corner as opposed to 35, so this one's a little tighter. But watch this, I'm gonna turn now. And turn now. And turn now. And instead of riding up to the corner and then trying to keep it in my lane, oh, 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 right? If I wait until the corner to turn, I can't get over to the inside where I wanna be which is what opens up the corner on the exit side. So turning in early and holding the proper racing line lets you carry significantly more speed if that's what you want to do, or you can run significantly less lean angle, which is always safer.
wait here for Susanna to catch up with us. And here she comes. So here we've got a gentle left followed by a significantly tighter right. You always want to be looking as far down the road as you can so that you get a sense of is the next corner the same radius as this? Is it tighter? Or is it opening up? That determines on how much speed you can carry through. Again, anytime you come out of a corner and you see the dotted line, you know that means the road's going to be, if not completely straight, then relatively straight. You can get on the gas pretty hard coming out of that turn. If your gentle left leads into a tighter right, <laughs> you don't want to be on the gas a bunch between those two because uh, obviously you have trouble getting rid of that speed. So look as far down the road as you can. Okay, we got a left coming up. It looks like it's sharper than we, where we have been, so I'm going to check my speed. Got a little bit of a left followed by a right. I'm looking through the trees. And there's our dotted line, so pull the trigger and zoom. Away we go. get over to the outside edge of the corner so I can see where we're headed. I go down a couple of gears. And I don't use the clutch when I'm downshifting. I don't use it much when I'm upshifting either, but I've actually done a video on that if you want to learn how to shift clutchlessly much smoother. Gentle right followed by a little tighter left. Now going around the edge of this hill, I don't know what's coming. Up oh, dotted line so we know we're going straight. Woo! And 30. Big helping of brakes to get the speed back down. It looks like this left is a little tighter than what we've been on, so I'm gonna slow down just a touch. anybody coming. I'm coming through this corner and there's a truck coming the other direction. Really important. And if I would have to run into the oncoming lane, it'd be really nice to know if there's a car or a vehicle coming the other direction. Do I actually have that room or don't I? And there's our car coming. See, a couple seconds later, if I had missed that corner, it would have been bad. Now coming up is a cattle grate across the road. Those things are extraordinarily slippery. So I always try to hit those straight up and down. I'll straighten the bike up and go right across it straight. I'm going to wait for Susanna again.
to how steady the, ex the exhaust mode is. One of the nice things about a bike with a distinctive exhaust is that there's no cushion. What I'm doing, you can hear it. Whether I'm being steady. stretch has a couple of deceivingly tight corners in it, and so we're definitely going to want to be watching as far ahead as we can. Go from there. I'm just going to leave the bike leaned over until I get out to the outer edges for the next corner. back, flip it back over the other direction. I'm not going very quickly, so normally your momentum would carry you there automatically, but go down a couple of gears. Considerably tighter, right? So I want to be on this side of the road. Boom, 1001. And now it fades right into the next corner, and I haven't changed my lean angle. If we want to go fast, it'd be a really good place to do it. But that is the greater part of Wolf Creek Pass. Absolutely outstanding road. There's almost never anybody out here. And uh, it's it's got enough sight lighting where you can really work on your initial lean angle. 1001. Even at low speeds, you don't have to be on a fast motorcycle. You don't have to be going quickly for the practice to make sense. So we are headed into the outskirts of the metropolis of Hannah, Utah. We're going to eat at the Hilton, the uh, Hannah Hilton, and uh, then we'll head back over the pass.